Well, good morning. Well, whether you drove in here this morning and you're here in person or you're joining us online, it is so good to have you join us today. I'm Dawn Hauser. I'm the pastor here at Aiken United Methodist Church. Today we mark the first Sunday in Lent and we begin our worship series, Gifts of the Darkwood, the Gift of Uncertainty. I would invite you to please stand if you are able and if you would sing with me number 399 take my life and let it be and we'll sing verses 1 and 3 remain standing as you are able as we begin our time of worship today in prayer. Let's pray. Unexpected love, enter our lives and open us to the gifts residing deep within the holy darkness of our lives. Walk with us, speak to us, call to us. In your many names we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today we begin a journey. It's an important journey. We begin the journey in the season of Lent. Our worship series, Gifts of the Darkwood, is about seeing life through new eyes. When we allow ourselves to accept the journey within the dark woods, the Holy Spirit guide tends to nudge us along, awaken us to a fuller life. But life is really messy. Life can be so uncertain. What if we saw how these uncomfortable times can actually help us to go, to, to help us to let go of all that we cannot possibly know so that we can live more wholeheartedly? Let us begin that journey today. I'd like to invite Jeannie. I think I thought I saw her here. Maybe she's not here. Oh, she's downstairs. That's okay. I'll do the scripture for this morning then. She's probably busy down there. So um, she's probably listening to us. <laughs> now that I just called her out, right? <laughs> so the reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 and 12. And it reads like this. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Here ends the reading. You know, 
The word for the day is uncertainty. And I'll tell you what, I've had my fair share of that recently. So, you know, we all go through periods of time when, you know, I think about the dark woods, the whole concept of the dark woods. Sometimes we stand at the edge of the dark woods and we peer in and it's really dark. It's really dark and we don't want to enter in there. There's all kinds of fear and uncertainty and there's a whole range of emotions that we go through. Sometimes we get pushed into the dark woods by circumstances or things that just happen in life. Sometimes we get drug into the dark woods by someone else. It just depends. Life can be really messy, really messy. And the dark woods is a scary, scary place. And always, always we are accompanied by uncertainty. We don't know what is going to be on the other side. You know, uh, a number of you probably know this already, but on Friday evening at about 11.30, my dad died. And, and I know that for a lot of people, that's like getting pushed into the dark woods. And it is dark. Many of you have lost parents. You've had parents who have passed away. You've had lots of different family members, maybe even children. It's a dark place to go to. But it's interesting that it's in the darkness that we find our Lord and Savior. We think about the things that are happening all over the world right now. We think about the people of Ukraine, and my gosh, they've been through 11 days of what probably feels like Armageddon for many of them. And yet we're seeing videos coming from the people of Ukraine who are singing beautiful, beautiful hymns. We're seeing images of them participating in communion and being together. And even in that darkness, in that uncertainty, they don't know. They don't know if they're going to live from one moment to the next. Yet, who's there with them? It's Jesus. Jesus is right there with them. There is so much that we can learn from that uncertainty, from being in that place. And the greatest thing that we can learn is that even in the darkest of days, God is with us always. God walks right next to us, step by step. I'm reminded of the hymn, or of the poem, uh, Footprints in the Sand. And in the end of that poem, she looks back and she says, but there are times that I only saw one set of footprints and Jesus reminds her, those were the times that I carried you. God is with us always, even in these dark and difficult times. And then I think about this passage of scripture. This, just last night I said to Danny, I said, what is with this passage of scripture with this? This does not, how do you meld the two together? And as I thought about it and I prayed about it, I thought, you know, they are kind of married together, the whole idea of uncertainty and how we, how we approach the dark woods that we all encounter in life. And what that scripture tells us is that as children, we're afraid of the dark, right? We're afraid of a lot of things as children. For many, when we're young children, not all, but for many, we don't know Jesus. We don't know the love of Jesus. But as we get older and we begin to have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, we begin to realize that he's with us always. Always. And so we mature. Just like we mature in our, in our bodies, in our statutes, hopefully in our mentality, in our our emotional being, we mature in our faith too. And that's important. It's a mature faith that knows that if we sit in the darkness of the dark woods, that we will encounter our creator there. And there's a gift in that, 
I've been through dark times in my life, very, very dark times, and it's in those moments where I learned the most. You know, I've been, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, I've been in conversations with um, the appointed cabinet for the Methodist Church about planting a new church for Native, it's a Native American church. And in the next year, I'm going to do some exploring and go out and see what other Native American churches are doing and how they're structured and just, just really do some good research. And... What I said to them was, I don't want to just go to the places where they've been successful. I need to go to the people who have had failure because we learn so much in failure. We sometimes learn more in failure than we do in success. That's important. And I think that's true about life, too. Sometimes we learn more through our failures than we do our success. And sometimes it's our failures that that's where Jesus finds us, or where we find Jesus. Jesus always knows where to find us. But it's where, where we find Jesus is in the darkest moments of life. And so this time during Lent, you know, Lent is supposed to be a time where we spend these weeks leading up to, to Easter in self-examination and really beginning to, to just examine who we are and what are we doing in our life? Are we doing everything right or do we have room for improvement? I would say that we're human, so we always have room for improvement, right? So one of the difficulties of life is that sometimes things are just awkward and we're just uncomfortable, and we just cannot figure out which way to go or what to do. There's a story that Brother David Steidelrast said, and I want to share it with you today. He said, you are like Reiki's swan in his awkward waddling across the ground. The swan doesn't cure his awkwardness by beating himself on the back, by moving faster, or by trying to organize himself better. He does it by moving toward the element water, where he belongs. It is the simple contact with the water that gives him grace and presence. You only have to touch the elemental waters in your own life, and it will transform everything. But you have to let yourself down into those waters from the ground on which you stand, and that can be very difficult, probably a little awkward too sometimes, particularly if you think that you might drown. Let go of this effort and let yourself down, however awkwardly, into the waters, he said. Sometimes we're like that when we're in the dark woods and we're trying to find our way out. The way out sometimes feels awkward. And, and we just remember that like the swan gets to the water and it's so beautiful. When you see them on the water, they're so beautiful and so graceful. But on land, they just look awkward and not right, right? They look out of place. Sometimes we can be that way too. Amen.
Thank you. I was sitting here thinking to myself, there were a few times in my life where I was able to go to church with my dad. Many of you know that I didn't meet my father until I was 34 years old. And one of the greatest joys that he had about going to church was to listen to the choir. And the church that they went to, they had a choir about the our same size as our choir, but he loved to listen to them. And my dad was very musical. Music was an important part of his faith. So, so thank you this morning for sharing with us. Well, you know, one of the <clears throat> ways that we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in the dark woods is to pray. I don't know about you, but when things are not right in my life, that's the first thing I start doing is praying. To pray, not just for ourselves, but also to pray for all of those who are in the world who are in need. I invite you to respond with the words, hear our prayer. When you hear the words, God, in your mercy, let's pray. In this Lenten season, Lord, we come to you because we know we are sinners and not good enough to win salvation for ourselves. Help us to remember that we are only made right with you through the suffering and death of your son Jesus on the cross. Keep us ever dependent on his ability to free us forever from the evil of sin. God, in your mercy, there are many people who are walking the dark woods for various reasons. Let us hold the names of those who need our prayers in the silences of our hearts. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. There are many places in this world where uncertainty reigns. Let us hold the names of those places in this world that need our prayers in the silences of our hearts. We especially pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for those in Ukraine who are this morning worshiping and praising and honoring you, God, even in the midst of warfare. We pray for those who are receiving refugees across their borders. We pray for the churches and the people who are just volunteering and working to help the many people who are fleeing for their lives. There are other places in the world, Lord God, where war has broken out. It isn't just Ukraine. We pray that you would intervene. We pray that you would intervene into the hearts of those who, who are waging war, that you would speak to their hearts about the killing and the maiming May they have a Paul moment where they come to know you in a very personal way. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these petitions we offer in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who did the will of God and lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, there are times when people find themselves truly walking in the dark woods and in need of assistance. We, the church, have been called to bring healing and hope to those who experience this darkness. We can't do this ministry without everyone's sharing and their sharing of their resources, whether those resources are time, talent, or financial resources. I'd like to invite you to partner with us in bringing healing and hope to those who are wandering in the dark woods. Each week we receive an offering to help support the ministries that we are engaged in. 
If you are watching online, you will find all of the information necessary to send an offering in the body of the video posting. And if you're here in the sanctuary, you will find some beautifully crafted wooden boxes in the back of the sanctuary. You are invited to leave your offering in those boxes and someone will care for those after the service. Please stand as you are able and sing with me from the United Methodist Hymnal number 94, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow, as we receive your gift today. Let us pray and ask God to bless the gifts we have received. No sanctuary is worthy of you, O God, but we bring our offerings not only to furnish this house of prayer, but to manifest to the world the gift of salvation that you freely offer in Jesus Christ. Use these gifts to grow your kingdom, to share your good news. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Well, I would like to invite you to remain standing as you are able, and please sing with me from the United Methodist Hymnal number 618, Let Us Break Bread Together, as we prepare our hearts to come to the Lord's table. is written on the bulletin and on the screen. I will read the italicized words if you would respond with the bolded words. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. Our confession today is spoken responsively. Forgiving fear, too much face time. Forgive, Forgive and restore, restore us, O oh God. For digging in rather than going with the flow. Forgive, Forgive and restore, restore us, O oh God. 
for holding too tight when what we need to do is to let go. Forgive, Forgive and restore, restore us, O oh God. God. Hear these words of assurance. God dwells with us no matter how sure or unsure we are. God is not uncertain about whether or not we are worthy of love. God is with you, forgiving and restoring you to a wholeheartedness. In the name of Amen. The holy living God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of the journey, it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. You have created all that is and we are grateful. Although we feel lost at times, you are ever present. Sometimes we back away from you, insistent on our own power to pull us through, refusing to stop and wait and listen in patience for the next steps. But you continue to show up, waiting patiently for us to turn to you once again. You are here to meet us, speak to us, once again, always faithful, always present in this body, the table, in this body, the people, and so together we proclaim the praise-filled truth of your glory along with all the saints. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heavenly and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are they who come in the name. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He proclaimed freedom for the bound, justice for the oppressed, grace for the lost, love for the prodigal. Through the life and ministry of Jesus, we can imagine and live into a community of love where no one is afraid. On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread. And when he took the bread, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. He asked God to bless it. And when he gave it to them, he said to them, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he passed it to his disciples and he said to them, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink it, remember me. And so we remember, we offer ourselves, we claim renewed strength for the journey. Christ has died, yet Christ is risen. Christ will come again in glory. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to be seated, and, and I invite you to raise your hands in our ancient Christian posture of prayer as we offer a prayer of blessing over our elements today. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine, Make them be for us sustenance on our way, crumbs on our path leading us home. By your spirit, open us to each other along this journey. Open us to the world, making us one in you through Christ, in the power of your amazing grace. When I'm loving, Lord, walk with me. When I'm caring for all God's children, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. So now we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ, the cup of forgiveness. In the United Methodist Church, we practice an open communion table. All who profess to follow the way of Jesus Christ are welcome to partake in the brokenness of Jesus' body and in the blood, the cup of forgiveness. And I know that peeling those lids off of those communion cups are something else. So the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ, the cup of forgiveness shed for you. Let us pray a prayer of thanksgiving after our communion. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. May the taste of this meal linger so that we will be strengthened in our Lenten journey. Give us courage to hear what may seem harsh so that we can find a deeper relationship with you. To the glory of your holy name we pray. Amen. Well, I would like to invite you to please stand as you are able, and if you would sing with me from the United Methodist Hymnal number 338, Where He Leads Me, and we'll sing verses 1 and 4. May the spirit of the living God may known to us most fully within life's dark wood. Go before you to show you the way. Go above you to watch over you. Go behind you to push you into places you may not necessarily go yourself. Go beneath you to uphold and uplift you. Go beside you to be your strong and constant companion and dwell within you to remind you that you are surely not alone and that you are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing burn brightly upon you and within you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace to share the light and the love of Jesus Christ with the world. Thank you.